Good morning, or how we say it in Sweden, Gomoron. In this video we'll talk about React context, how to use it and what are its pros and cons compared to Redux. Let's say we have the following application. We have a list of nodes and a component, new node input, that allows to create new node records. This component has an input that uses text state to track the input value. And when we click on the button, we call the add node function that needs to be stored somewhere and made available across the application. And we set the text of the input to an empty string. Now inside of the main component inside of the app, we need to get the list of nodes from something globally available across application. And then we render a list item with node text and we assign an on-click handler to it that will remove this node by its ID. So we need something to store the list of nodes and provide the functions to add and remove them. One of the ways to do it is to use React context. Create a new file, nodes, context.js. First of all, we need to import React. We also need to import create context. And now we can use this function to create context. Const nodes context equals create context. And here we can pass the default value. Keep in mind that this default value will be used only if your component tree is not wrapped into provider. I will show it a bit later. We need to export this nodes context. Export. And now let's define the provider that will hold the nodes list and provide the functions add node and remove node. Export const nodes provider equals we need to accept children and we return a component that uses nodes context provider and renders children inside of it. Context consists of two parts. First, it is a provider in which we put the values through the value prop. So here we'll need to pass the nodes, add node and remove node. We'll define them in a few seconds. And then in your components, you use the consumer to get the values back from the context. So let's define the nodes. It will be a state nodes set nodes equals use state with the default value empty array. Now let's define add node and remove node functions. Const add node equals a function that receives the text and updates the nodes set nodes nodes plus a new one with the text text and id we'll create it using nano id let's install it yarn add nano id import nano id from nano id and remove node will be set nodes to nodes filter node we remove by id so we filter the nodes where node id is not equal to id okay now we have the nodes provider it uses nodes context provider passes the value through it the value contains three fields nodes it's a list of nodes add node and remove node functions and now we need to go to index.js and wrap our app into our nodes provider. Now inside of our components, we can use the hook use context to get the values from our context. Let's go to app.js, const nodes remove node equals use context nodes context. Now we go to new node input and here we can get the add node function also from the context. Const add node equals use context nodes context let's add an add node text to the bottom now go to the browser let's add some nodes and when we click on them they get removed now in the nodes context i said that the default value will be used only when you don't use the provider so let's set some value that will contain nodes and let's set a very specific array here with a node with text hello I'm default and ID, let's say it will be zero. Format the document and let's go back to the browser. As you can see, there is no default node here. Let's go to index.js, remove the nodes provider. Now back to the browser and here you see the default node that we created. And of course, if there is no provider, you won't be able to add new nodes. Look at this. Add node is not a function. We didn't define it on the default context. Let's add nodes provider back. 
now everything works again. Okay, it's all great and we can use context to store the global values. We can define functions and we can update the global state using it. So why don't we always use it instead of Redux or Mobex or any other solution? So first of all, context providers are quite cumbersome to test. I have a video about it on my channel and I will leave a link to it. But you will see that it's not quite easy and you will have to create another test component to get the values out of the context. Another reason are side effects. When you use context, you will have to use the use effect hook to fetch the data. And then your context will become even harder to test. So if you have side effects logic bound to your global state, I would recommend using some state management solution not necessarily redux you can use mobex or anything else you prefer but probably just context itself won't be enough for you now to the pros the biggest context advantage is that you can store unserializable data for example you can store references to the elements let me show what i mean here is a drawing application that i made for my react typescript book here you can draw some strokes and you can undo and redo them you can change the colors and you can save your projects on the backend. When you save your project, let's call it test, save, and then we can load it. You need to generate a thumbnail, and I do it inside of this save project component, save project panel. And this means that I need to get a reference to the context into this component. How do I do this? Using context. It looks a bit more complex because I had to define the types because I'm using TypeScript here. But essentially we're doing the same. I'm defining the value. In this case, it's a reference to the context. I pass it through the value, through the context provider. Now inside of the file panel, where I need to save the thumbnail, I get the reference to the canvas through the use canvas hook that is just a wrapper around the use context. So the bottom line is if your state is complex and you need to test it, or you have side effects that are related to your global state, use Redux, Mobex, or any other global state management solution. Use context if your state is small or you need to store non-serializable values, like for example, element ref. And by the way, this drawing application is actually made using Redux. So you can combine context and Redux in one application. I use context to store the unserializable value, the reference to the canvas, and I use Redux to store all the relevant data. In my case, it's a list of strokes. Okay, hope it was useful, subscribe to the channel to see more useful tutorials and join my Discord server to pick the topics of the next videos. See you next time.